Hi, I'm Joe Navarro and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject that I get an inordinate amount of questions on and that is on body language, nonverbals, and dating. And uh, so today I've decided to name this uh, the vocabulary of love. And uh, the only way for me to really talk about this subject is to reflect on the work of my friend, uh, David Givens, who uh, wrote probably one of the best books ever on the topic of uh, love. Uh, the book, Love Signals, is, is a powerful read because he gets into both the psychology, the biology, um, and in some cases, the anthropology of love signals uh, around the world. You know, I've studied uh, human behaviors uh, for over 50 years, and of course, I've observed dating behavior and courtship behaviors, and, um, and so I've taken down some of the notes uh, along the way of, of what I have uh, observed. In most cultures, um, there's a, a certain pattern, and certainly there's a biological pattern, and that is where uh, we become interested in someone, and that begins to change the chemistry in us. Uh, we delight in seeing a person that we are attracted to, even if it's instantaneous and, and other things um, will happen. Uh, around the world, one of the things that we find that often happens when we become interested in others, and it could be in a public setting or even in, in uh, let's say, at school or uh, among colleagues at, at work, is that there is extra grooming. Efforts are made to dress a little better, fix your hair. Um, uh, guys will tend to stand a little uh, uh, stiffer and uh, maybe fix their, their collar or uh, fix themselves. Women will uh, touch their hair and so forth. So around the world, uh, we see uh, grooming increases uh, when we're interested in, uh, in others. Um, the other thing that naturally happens is when people are interested in each other, they tend to remain within that visual orbit. Or let's say they're at a bar or, or so forth. Uh, they seem to triangulate, uh, circle about, uh, remain uh, close in proximity, um, almost uh, uh, drawn to each other. And, uh, and even when they uh, accidentally run into each other uh, in the hallway or uh, uh, maybe uh, in the coffee or break room and so forth, um, the, their uh, timing is often aligned so that they can remain uh, in their orbit. And many times it's truly subconscious the, um, the other thing that uh, tends to happen also is that our faces tend to relax. Um, we naturally uh, find that the being in the presence of this individual uh, causes this effect where the muscles literally relax in the face. Uh, and, and we may feel a little jittery, but um, there is facial uh, relaxation. And this is one of those behaviors that we call reward behaviors, where uh, you often see it with the mother and the child. Uh, the baby smiles, the mother smiles. And so there's these um, back and forth reward behaviors. This happens in, uh, in dating uh, situations. Um, if, uh, you know, many times we are reluctant to make uh, direct eye contact. So a lot of times the eye contact that uh, we initially uh, make with, with someone we're interested in may be slightly askance. But what's interesting is, is how many times it takes place. So we may be conversing with somebody, but we'll look over askance. Uh, certainly more than once. How many times? Uh, nobody really knows. It can be many, many times. But what's happening is, is that we know that staring at someone can, can be a turnoff. 
So I think we've uh, adapted this behavior around the world to sort of just uh, look askance at first and see if we see uh, those um, reward behaviors such as a smile or the relaxation of the face. Unbeknownst to you, um, one of the things that happens when we are uh, near the presence, we don't have to be directly in front of them, but near the presence of someone that we really like is your pupils will dilate. And the benefit of that is that it lets in more light. The muscles of the eyes relax, more light comes in. And uh, I remember when I was uh, being trained as a, in, in observation, I was reminded that uh, this is why often bars dim the lights because it forces the eyes to dilate and uh, everybody seems to, to appear uh, uh, more appealing. And in fact, when your eyes dilate, uh, they get larger and you become more appealing. Uh, the Egyptians, going back to the time of Cleopatra, would, uh, would put uh, chemicals uh, in their eyes to, uh, to dilate them because they enhance the beauty of the eye. At some point, uh, you know, these individuals will in fact lock eyes. And, uh, and this will uh, take place uh, for several seconds. And uh, this is interesting because most of us become very uncomfortable when somebody stares at us. This is uh, almost uh, universal. Uh, we perceive somebody staring at us as a threat, but w when it comes to gaze, it's, it's different. At, at some point, uh, there'll be some uh, uh, mirroring that will begin to, to take place. Isopraxis, same behavior, uh, what we call mirroring, really is a powerful tool to communicate that I'm comfortable with you. And uh, this happens, uh, mirroring can take place uh, when we're uh, walking with someone and we decide to walk at the same pace with them so that we remain in their orbit or when they smile, we smile, or when they sit, we sit. Uh, look at mirroring as, uh, as the, 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 the behaviors of liking and behaviors of, of comfort. What I'm always uh, puzzled at is how people don't get it. Um, they're, uh, you know, somebody is maybe telling another person they're interested in them and, and so forth, and you see no reciprocity, you see no mirroring in their behavior. Uh, maybe they remain stiff, uh, maybe their faces uh, become very tight, but certainly they're not mirroring uh, the way they're sitting, their posture, uh, and, and so forth. I always uh, teach uh, synchrony is harmony. And so when we don't see synchrony, when, when we don't see mirroring, uh, there is some sort of um, psychological uh, uh, discomfort. At, at some point, you know, uh, people will come together. We uh, emit uh, uh, pheromones and we are absorbing each other's uh, uh, pheromones when we're in close proximity. We want to smell each other. Uh, smell, our body chemistry is very much a part of this uh, area of uh, love signals or the vocabulary of, uh, of romance. Um, what's interesting is, and I think there's a lot of uh, empirical uh, uh, examples of this, that we actually prefer in the dating arena around the world, we actually prefer the natural scent of the individual uh, more so than the artificial perfumes and colognes and so forth. So that's it for part one. Come back for more on the vocabulary of love.